Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to continue our five part series on the AN-225 Miria with the navigation side of this particular aircraft. Now this is a big airplane, you know, there's a lot of navigational options on here and the, of course the standard one we have is our GPS up in the front seat. But really what this video is going to be focusing on is how you can control what you're looking at and how you can kind of interpret some of the information that's in front of you. Now I have to say it is an ultra bummer that these guys don't work because they have really fun Doppler navigational systems. They also have, you know, gloss NAS and stuff like that but ah what a bummer so what we have here is a pretty straightforward navigational suite now the first thing you're going to discover as you're flying this thing around is whether you're the captain or the navigator you've got this little series of buttons located down here in the bottom left corner near your hsi this allows you to pick what navigational mode you'd like displayed on your device keep in mind what you see displayed doesn't necessarily mean it's the thing you're using so for example, if I come over here and press the uh, NAV button, H-A-B, that'd be NAV, you'll go ahead and see the currently selected navigational data. Now, right now, I've actually got myself a good old fashioned GPS course cruising around here. Uh, we're heading up to Heathrow here. And you can see it's about, uh, you know, 1143. It, it's a pretty good flight for us as far as distance goes. So this number's not gonna mean much right now. You'll notice if I come over here and press the VOR button, it'll actually select the nearest of VR that I have clicked on. You also probably observe that after I bop that button, that the information that you're seeing over here doesn't seem to agree with the information that agrees here. Uh, that's because you're dealing with kilometers versus dealing with miles. Uh, so one of the things you have to watch out for is which mode you're in. So you can actually see the Mule, M-I-L-E. You can see our mode. Well, it's actually M-I-L-I, -I basically, is how it's pronouncing. So this says I'm about 7 miles. This is about 12 kilometers. That actually makes a lot of sense. Now, if I go to here, this would be my VR tour too. Notice these nav flags pop out to remind me that I'm not receiving a value there. If I come over here, this is going to be my ADF signal. I can see that I have an ADF station basically behind me. Press the AP key. This is going to be my other ADF that's behind me as well. And of course, so we have the ability to select those two as well, should we need them. Now, a lot of people, what they do is they say, oh my gosh, how do I change the frequencies on those things? Well, it's a little involved. First things first, if you come over here to our AFS, so I've got this little display right here, which will actually tell you the currently selected frequency. In this case, I've got 113.30 selected at this particular time, which, you know, it makes sense given that I dialed it in a minute ago. If I were to actually come over here and pop this little thing to the right, you actually see that it selects my VOR2. This is my ADF frequency. This is my ADF2 frequency. Uh, of course, it's going to give me uh, what I'm using for my DME. Right now, I'm using 113.30 as my DME source. And of course, we have the other options as well. Now, this is useful for us as a pilot because we can use this as a way to cross-reference. I see I'm getting a little slow here. I'm actually going to reduce. This is in meters per second, by the way, in case you were curious. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and float back here to the navigator seat. We're going to take a look at how we can control those different values. You're going to have a couple different sets here. The first one up here is you're going to have the two ADF inserting controls. So this is going to be ADF1. This is going to be ADF2. Now, one of the things is I've dialed these both into local NDB so that you can actually see them in action. If we actually want to view where those are, we have to actually select them and go ahead and select what mode we want. Notice, by the way, I can come over here and select this HSI to the navigation screen, and then I can pop this one onto a different value as well. So if I come over here and press VOR1, for example, we're now receiving the signal from VOR1. We're also displaying the display from ADF2. Now, if I came here, you'll notice this little needle did a little wiggle because now we're receiving the signal from 29 or 5, and we're able to actually see exactly where that is in addition to what we have selected over on this side. Now, some people, of course, say, whoa, 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 chief, um, this is useless. It doesn't tell me my course. Actually, that's because you select your course over on these two boxes right here. By the way, your currently selected navigational data switch is going to be indicated here by what we have selected. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and grab this thing, and I'm actually going to change the course. You'll notice as I change the course that um, we're not getting much of an update there of position because I haven't locked myself up into a position where it actually will acquire where it needs to be there. But this would be the tool that you would use to go ahead and dial in the VOR that you're actually going to be following at that particular point. So you can see when I hit that one, it snaps immediately out of the way. I set that one back off and go back to regular VOR mode. And now I have the ability to dial in it exactly how I want to, to follow the course that I wish to follow for a particular mission. Now I can go over here and select landing mode if I want. All those options are all going to be visible over on this side. Now, if I wanted to uh, go ahead and pick a different VOR for a second here, I'll double check my notes, uh, see if there's anything close by that I can uh, dial into to kind of steal some of their electrical signals for our glory here. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. We have a frequency. Ah, here we are. Uh, what is this? 112.20. Let's go ahead and grab that real quick. 112.20. I'm going to dial that one in. Ooh, 
one, one, two. Whoops. Watch out. This is the volume knob. You don't want to do the volume knob. You want to do the one that actually changes the numbers. So that's going to go ahead and select a different VOR station. So when I push this one, you'll actually see that that gives us the ability to pop onto that other one as well. So that's going to allow us to tune. Now, one of the nice things that the Navigator has back here as well is you have a display of our current altitude both in meters as well as feet. You have a climb rate in meters a second. You have an official clock. You also have a radar altimeter and your own pair of instruments for DME purposes. Now, when I jump back here in the front seat, you can now see that as the pilot, oh, we have all the critical information that I need to have. In this case, I'm actually going to display the navigational information. Now, you're probably saying, where does the source of the navigation actually come from? Now, this is uh, picking a little into the world of autopilot here, but the source of the autopilot or the uh, navigational information actually comes from this selector knob located right here in the middle. This particular tool operates independent of this particular instrument. This is going to give us the ability to tell our autopilot what system we want to use for the purposes of navigation. Again, that's getting ahead of us. But the important thing to know is if I have navigate switch selected, I need to make sure my GPS is set to either GPS or VLOC in order for these numbers all to come together to actually make sense in some sort of fashion that we can actually use them for our purposes of our landing at Sloan. It's another thing uh, worth noting too uh, when you're planning your navigational or radios and instruments that if you float up above your head, you'll notice that there is a separate set of radios right up here. You know, one of the switches you want to keep an eye out for uh, when you're popping up here, by the way, you can switch it between DME and VOR and just straight up nav one with the switch here, is you want to double check what units you're in. If you click that right there, you'll probably notice that the moment you do that, you have now switched this DME to read in kilometers instead of miles. Uh, you may wish to do that depending on what system that you're actually operating in. In this case, if we're basically Eastern Europe right now, so it would probably make most sense to go ahead and operate in those particular units. The next thing we're going to take a look at, and uh, this is a pretty big one because uh, this one confused me to death when I first started flying this aircraft, is figuring out exactly how we're going to go ahead. I'm actually going to give just a tiny bit more power here. How we're going to go ahead and choose what course our HSI is pointing at. So if you actually would have flowed over here to your right, you would see these big knobs right here in the middle here. These knobs give you the ability to not only manually control your autopilot, but they also give you the oh so critical heading bug control. So right now, if I float down here, I can see the fact that I'm on a desired track of 277. If I come over here, this requires a little bit of skill, but if you actually move your head back and zoom in at the same time, you can hold your mouse over this thing. You can actually crank this so that you can see exactly where you're going. So you can see I am more or less on course right now, so I can actually put that right there. So that will give you the ability to actually dial in your desired heading that you wish to use for whatever particular function that you wish to operate it on. Now, if uh, people give you the ability to you know, take a left or take a right or something like that, you can just now come down here, quickly crank this thing over the way that you needed to do it, and then follow that bug that you're going to see appearing on the screen. It's worth noting that I put my heading bug over there. If I float over back here where our navigator's HSI is listed, you'll notice that his navigational position doesn't change. Oh, that's important to notice that because if you don't catch that, you're going to run into a really, really fun situation where you're going to be like, why is the thing not changing? And it's because that this is a separate set of HSIs than the pilot. Now, to confuse you even more, and again, this is why I love this plane, if you float over to the co-pilot, he has a different set of buttons. As a matter of fact, if I press the nav button for him, you'll see that that provides me with my navigation data, which is going to be derived from whatever I have down there. I think I can back the throttle up. I think I got more than close enough to the altitude I need to climb at. So some just quick tips for navigating this aircraft. Uh, remember, you're a very big airplane. So when you are making your turns and things like that, you have to double check to make sure that you've given yourself enough room to do it. Another thing, and uh, this is really critical, this is more of an autopilot warning. This autopilot will do anything you're telling it to do at that time, which means you always run the risk if you hit the wrong button that it will try to do too many things at once and it won't do any of the things that you, this channel should not be up. Um, it shouldn't, won't do any of the things that you want it to. Like I said, just makes things a little bit fun. And my last point here is your GPS does work, but just double check to make when you start dialing all your frequencies in here, double check to make sure what mode you're in at the bottom right corner. If you really want to follow a GPS course, double check to make sure you're actually in the correct mode. So uh, that's it as far as navigational instruments go. So uh, generally, if you want to be traditional, you're probably using a lot of ADF, in which case uh, you're probably going to be bopping these buttons all the time. If you're uh, being a little bit uh, more traditional flight simulator -y, just make sure that you have your course all selected. Make sure that you have GPS selected and make sure whatever you're using down here has been pre-selected to actually enable you to fly the course that you're looking to fly. Enjoy.